Should Florida State fans be concerned with Mike Norvell's press conference today? Or was that just coach speak and he's just trying to pump up his team? You are Locked On Seminoles, your daily podcast on the Florida State Seminoles. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into another edition of Locked On Seminoles. I am your host, Brian Smith, and today I'm going to do a rather quick podcast, but one that I think is pretty important. And honestly, the reason it's not going to be as long is because of the press conference that I was just watching from Florida State head coach Mike Norvell. Now, I'm going to get into more specifics, but this is the way I look at it. From years and years of being at press conferences, watching them, studying them, there's a lot of different forms of coach speak. One thing that Norvell doesn't really do is give a lot of bull. He pretty much just kind of lays it out there. But he kept coming back to execution, talking about guys doing the right things, getting off the field on third down. We need to be more consistent. Like he was was taking some small paper cuts over and over again to his team. Maybe it's a different way to motivate him, but I think he's tired of the misfires, if you will, because he also talked about they're one of the top teams in the nation, rightfully so in all the stuff regarding explosive plays on offense, et cetera, kind of going back and forth. So that's what we're going to talk about. And I want to get your head on that because as I go over a few things that Mike brought up, I'm also going to bring up a few of the, the players I've got down here on my notes, my my handy notepad with Virginia Tech because they're better than I thought they were. And if you don't believe me, ask Pittsburgh. You just got spanked by them. And then finally, we're going to talk about the upcoming schedule, some of the games. One of the fun things about Florida State is going to the game, talking about Florida State event and tickets. We'll talk a little bit about that. And speaking of, it is kind of ironic that I'm going to be mentioning that because Game Time is our day today's sponsor. Um, I was just looking at the app. As a matter of fact, I'll pull it up right here. What are ticket prices going for for games? And right now, it's actually not too bad. There's Virginia Tech tickets on Game Time for 82 bucks. Syracuse next week starts at $28. Duke, which is going to be a huge game, is only $63. On the Game Time app, GameTime.co, it's not not .com, GameTime.co. You can just type in Florida State Football. It's a really easy app. It takes about three seconds to figure it out, to be quite honest. Search box, type in what you're looking for, go get you some. This is today's sponsor for a reason, because we found something that matches this show really well. Um, this is the deal with, with the game time app, you can get through where you need to go really quick. Last minute tickets, flash deals up to the moment of the game. You can find tickets, just about anything, football, basketball, concerts, whatever it is that you're looking for. Uh, game time has deals right up to the last second. They have opportunities for you to get stuff in advance. They will work with you on what you're trying to do. Uh, you can even go to like theater or comedy, something like that. This isn't just sports you think of the word game time it's just sports it is not game time guarantee also means that you get the best price if you find tickets for the same price or, or less price in the same row same section they will give you 110 percent back so there's no there's no worry with them take it guesswork out of buying tickets with game time download the game time app create an account use code locked on college for 20 dollars off your first purchase terms apply again create an account redeem code Locked on College. That's L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Yeah, this is going to be a pretty quick podcast today, but here's the deal: Mike Norvell's press conference was unique. I mean, he comes out and he's pretty positive. It's typical Mike in that regard. But he kept going back to like execution and stuff like it was just more than normal. And and the bells are going off in my head. And that's why I had the lead in that I did. Is it just coach speak slash trying to motivate his team? Because these kids watch some of that stuff and their parents definitely do and talk to them. Kids on campus will say, hey, I I heard this. What do you think? Because, you know, they talk to the players they are in class with, et cetera. Coaches do different things to get messages to their team. It's not a new concept. But Florida State, quite frankly, has been sleepwalking at times during games, even in the Clemson game, 
which is utterly ridiculous. They played like crap early on in the game. And part of that's credit to Clemson, but most of that was on FSU. Mental errors, which drives coaches into retirement quicker than they would like. But to that point, he brought up a couple key things on both sides of the ball, talking about being more consistent on offense. And quite honestly, that was a shot at the run game because it's not like the passing game's failing because if it was, Florida State would have a couple losses right now, if not three. They would also be in a situation where they'd have an infighting going on because you can't have this much talent to have those losses. They were close to losing to BC. They were down at one point to LSU. They were down to Clemson. So they've figured out some things. But I think this is his way, in my opinion, to kind of say giddy up. You guys need to figure this out. He said they had a couple good days of practice in the off week. He he openly did. He, he offered that. But he still came back to the point about execution and stuff quite a bit. Anyway, I, I thought that was interesting. To that point, and this is something that it makes college football incredible, Virginia Tech's offensive skill players. And this is, I think, why he's so concerned about execution. Nobody's going to give Florida State any crying points if they lose or even don't win by 20 against Virginia Tech. But they're better than people think. Kyron Jones. 6'2", 235. That's a big drink of water. Paraland, Texas, which just south of Houston, he's the quarterback. He will run over you or throw it over you. Big arm, big kid, big quarterback. So he's starting to figure it out a little bit. These aren't great numbers, but he's, again, he's just now starting to, which is really hard, number one, because you're not going to motivate the kids the way you'd like, although he's trying. I, in my opinion, I'm convinced Norvell is trying to motivate his players. 53 of 94, 56.4%, not that great. 618 yards, 6.6 yards per completion, four touchdowns, one interception. The last, very last stat is the one I'm impressed with. Only one pick in 94 throws. And he's not taking all the reps. They've, they've got other guys that have that have taken some, sta- some snaps. Quarterback, matter of fact, I'm just going to pull that up. Passing for the Hokies, there's two guys. Grant Wells has also got 62 attempts, so he's got about 40% of the passes. They're a team that can that can get after you a little bit. They've got nine touchdown passes. They've got some big receivers. In particular, and again, this is you just got to dive into it. This, this is the way it goes, man. Daquan Felton, 6'5", 215 pounds, 14 catches, 209 yards, about 15 yards of catch and a couple of scores. They got another kid named Jalen Lane Smaller. It's got three touchdowns. If they give Kyron an opportunity to run around a little bit, I keep saying this seems like every week it's the same thing. It's a mobile quarterback in the SC in the ACC. But here we are again, another kid that can run around. But this one will run over you. He's fullback kind of big and playing quarterback. Florida State has to keep this kid in the pocket. I'm gonna it seems like again, I just say this every week. I think that's why Norvell is going on and on. And it's also because of Felton and some of those other guys. If he extends plays, he can extend the game. Florida State should be up 21 to seven or something like that at half. But if you let them score at the end of the first half, for instance, on a 70 yard drive in like a minute, because they give up a 45 yard pass play when he throws it up after he escapes out of the pocket. Well, if drones is able to do that, then Florida State could be looking at a different kind of situation. If it's 21, 14 and a half, something like that. You're in a really close game going into the third quarter. They can't have that. So I think Florida State knows they're, they're a better team, but that's also the concern for Norvell. Uh, there are a lot of other talking points from the press conference, but those are the biggest ones for me from a football strategic kind of point of view. And I, I, I eat that stuff for lunch. I love it probably more than most. But I'm also concerned that he brought it up so much. Like he knows what's going on because he's the head coach. He sees everybody in practice. I'm just worried that he thinks they're going to come out flatter than a pancake against Virginia Tech. And he could be right if that's if I'm correct in assuming that. So uh, one last thing about this game to help Florida State. A lot of times when Florida State or any other major team is top five in the nation, et cetera, and they're playing a home opponent, that is just mediocre or less, the crowd is sleepy. The thing that you can't have in a game like this is the crowd not to be into it. 
I know Florida State fans are notorious for being loud and all that. I get it. Don't can get crazy. But sometimes it's not if they don't start out hot. And again, like I was going over, the tickets prices are pretty good. I'll go say that again. But the Virginia Tech tickets right now are only 82, to 82 bucks on Game Time app. So if you wanted to get tickets, it's not that bad. There shouldn't be any doubt that Florida State is at home, regardless of how they come out of the tunnel and how good they play in the first five to seven minutes. Florida State needs that energy. And even if they come out on fire, and they very well could, they need to see that crowd go nuts. This should be a game where Florida State fans have a ton of fun. They should win, and you should be going ballistic. I think it will be that way, but if they get down, just remember, this is a better Virginia Tech team than what the media and all that's going to look at. I've, I've done the research here, and Norvell would not have been saying the things he did unless it was that way. He's not a stupid guy. He didn't become the head coach at Florida State by random chance. Just think about that. So a uh, couple other quick notes before I get out of here on this podcast. Number one, and most importantly, we're going to be discussing a little bit more about recruiting coming up. They've got LJ McCray, just as a reminder, the big time defensive lineman out of Mainland High School coming into town. That's that's a huge deal for Florida State. You can't teach the physical traits of that young man, 6'6", 275, somewhere in that range. Very athletic, plays outside linebacker, for crying out loud at Mainland High School and kind of an edge guy. There's also a lot of stuff going on trying to set up visits. I'm hoping I'm going to hear some more definitive notes. That's iffy between now and the end of the week. I'm curious to see if Florida State tries to get anybody else on campus this coming weekend or you know maybe one of the others coming up, the kids that they're trying to flip. This is the time of year somebody on game day will text me and it'll be like, oh, just so you know, so-and-so is visiting and blah, blah, blah. And he's committed to this school, but he's going to be at Florida State. He's going to be at Florida. He's going to be at South Carolina, whatever. I have a feeling with three home games, Florida State's going to see one or two of these kind of visits. I don't have any list yet. I'm not saying I do, but don't be surprised when that happens. So um, we'll talk more about Virginia Tech. I'm going to watch some more film, talk to some people, et cetera, try to get a better idea. I know somebody I talked to, said that they've just had some guys banged up, et cetera, but they do have some upside on offense. That's what I was told. We'll see if that's right. But uh, anyway, everybody have a great night. Thank you very much.